hello to you. Ooh. It's not very often that I feel a little bit nervy about a YouTube video, um, but there are some topics and questions that come up time and time again uh, that I either avoid or I answer just briefly on Instagram. And I thought since the video last week that was about Darcy going to the Royal Ballet School um, had such lovely comments and such lovely discussion around it, like in the comment section underneath, um, that now would be a good time to tackle three big topics slash questions that I see a lot. Obviously, I'm coming at these answers from my own opinion, so I will have like some sort of Louise Pentland bias in there, um, and I'm interested to hear your opinions as well. Uh, but some of the topics can be quite sensitive, so I would ask you to be sensitive in the comment section if you choose to get involved. So all of these topics are related to dancing, because if you're new, if you've just come to this video, I have two daughters, one is 11, Darcy, and Pearl is five. Both of them dance lots of different types of dancing. My youngest does tap, ballet, contemporary, modern. She does a bit of everything. Um, and then my elder daughter, Darcy, she does lots of things, but she is mainly focused on classical ballet. That is her love and her passion. And we've done lots and lots around it. Uh, so these topics and questions are related to ballet um, and dance, but mostly ballet. And they are, is it expensive and the financial side of it, body image, and competitive dance mums. So I think we'll start with, is it expensive? Okay, so before we even start talking about the costs and finances side of things, money is very black and white in that a number is a number, but your response and feelings towards that number is all gonna be subjective. So what one person thinks is expensive, another one might think is cheap and vice versa. So. The quick answer to is ballet expensive is no and then yes. And what I mean by that is it depends how far you want to take it. I'm going to give you some actual figures in a second. Um, but it depends how far you want to take something. And I think that would probably apply across the board to pretty much all hobbies, passions and pursuits. But um, a weekly class for a one hour class at the local dance school that Darcy and Pearl both go to ranges from three pounds to eight pounds per class. And that will be a class with lots of young people or children in it and one or two teachers teaching them, you know, all the things they're teaching them. So if you were to do one class a week, which is what we started with, um, I would say that no, that's not hugely expensive. But the expense comes when you get more into it and you dive down that rabbit hole. And as you are diving down, your child is pointing their toes and spinning around in a tutu and you are just <laughs> like saying goodbye to money as you go down this hole. So if you want to get into festivals, which are like dance competitions, they do them locally, they go um, also nationally, they go all the way up to the Dance World Cup, which is, as you can see, spending more money. But to enter into a category, so you could just do a dance competition and enter into one category, but if your child does lots of different dances, they might start wanting to enter into lots more categories. It's around seven pounds-ish. So let's say five to 10 pounds to enter into a category. So you might be thinking, okay, so like, let's say, let's go max 10 pounds to enter into a category. Then you're also going to pay to watch it and there's usually like a little ticket fee on the door that's usually about a fiver so if you and your partner and your sibling and your auntie and uncle are going to go you're spending a bit more money you've also got to get to that place so that might be petrol or uh, public transport you also need a costume for that um dance so let me get onto costumes for you because i've written down some figures here if you wanted a bespoke brand new tutu, you could be looking, well, you're looking at hundreds of pounds, like 300 to 400 pounds roughly, if you want a really like fandangled, wowie wowie, bling-tastic brand new tutu. A lot of people sell tutus though because they're not wearing them every day, obviously they're just wearing them for like show pieces. Um, so you could buy a second-hand tutu for around 100 to 200 pounds, which is still a lot of money. Um, you're also going to want to have really clean fresh shoes so you're going to want to buy new ballet slippers not every time obviously um you just keep them clean and then put them what we do is we have separate festival ballet slippers and we keep those clean um and then put them on for that 
um, and then also if you're doing a routine that requires like a different kind of costume um, those are often handmade as well because you know you can't can't always go into a shop and be like oh that's exactly the dance competition costume I'm looking for here at H&M um, and so you'll need a seamstress or you can get nifty with a sewing machine yourself and bedazzle it all yourself but you are looking at more money there as well and also I've written down just the small things but the small things do add up so hair accessories spray brushes bun nets ballet pins and of course if you're there all day you're going to be wanting to be taking some lunch some food that kind of stuff so you've got your weekly classes and then all of a sudden if you're doing festivals that's adding up as well and before the festival you might want to book a private lesson with a dance teacher um, and private lessons can be around 30 pounds um 15 pounds per 30 minutes or about 30 pounds for the hour obviously this will vary for different levels of teachers so some might charge a bit more if they're more experienced and might charge less if they're um less experienced etc so that's already mounting up you can go bigger though you can do day workshops at different places so what darcy did last week um well she didn't do it last week but the video went up last week at the royal ballet school that was a day workshop it was called their winter intensive and that workshop I booked before Christmas um, and that cost £120 for the day and she arrived at, she had to sign in at nine, half nine and I picked her up just before four. So like a full school day, but that's £120. And also if you don't live locally in London, who actually lives in central London, um, you've got to get in and then you've got to decide what you're doing with your time whilst you're waiting or are you staying over somewhere? So there's those surrounding costs to consider as well also you might want to buy a kit for that we just went darcy just used the leotard that she had from something else but we did have to buy a yoga mat but if you've already got one it depends if you're like really into the ballet stuff you might have a lot of the stuff already but if you're new to it you will have to get that sorted um you can go further than a one-day course you can do week-long courses a lot of the ballet schools offer um intensives over the summer holidays easter holidays all the school holidays basically um so for example a ballet boost summer intensive which is something that darcy did two years ago now maybe one or two years ago um i looked on their website for what it will be this year and for five days it's 350 pounds um and then of course you've got travel if you're coming in and out of london or if you're going to stay over and food and all your surrounding costs with that you might think wow that's that's getting pretty expensive you can go bigger you can spend even more um they do i've called them stay away weeks here in my nose um five week courses um one of the bigger ballet schools does a five week course um and i'm i haven't written it clearly in my notes but i think that was like a residential and i've written here that's over four thousand pounds um so really you can throw a lot of money at ballet if you want to this will all, is that all of it? Uh, traveling to other countries, oh no it's not, you can go bigger. Um, you can travel to other countries to, extent, to attend prestigious foreign ballet schools. Um, they will often have details on their website where you can audition, um, sometimes it's like a virtual audition, and then you can attend that, and a lot of people like to do that as part of like, make a holiday of it for the family, and then the child goes and dances. Um, and if you are really, really, really into it, there are actually vocational day schools. So like Darcy goes to a day school where she learns, you know, maths and English and stuff. And then her dance school is what she does outside of school. But if you're really, really into it, I'm aware I've been talking so long. If you're really, really into it, you can go to a vocational school that focuses on dance um, and performance. They still do do... Um, you know maths and english and science but they have a huge focus on performance um and i looked at the fees for one of those um so if you wanted to go to a vocational school for the performing arts it is nearly twelve thousand pounds per term if you're boarding and it's just over six and a half thousand pounds per term if you're a day student so i've put here in conclusion if you wanted to you could spend thousands um we are not at that level i'm really happy with the school darcy's at she doesn't do stay away weeks um but we have done some of the day courses and she did do that ballet boost summer intensive um 
it really depends on what you want out of it and how much your what your budget is um if you if your child if your child wants to be a professional ballerina and it's the only thing they want to do and they are so talented and you can see that in them and they are like so keen for it i can understand why people would spend that money to help them get to that point i don't know that that's where we are um but I don't judge either way whether you do a once a week lesson or whether you're spending thousands and thousands of pounds a year doing the full whammy package of vocational schools and weeks away and foreign trips like no judgment from me if you love it and you can afford it why not <sighs> I will let that settle in for a mo and then we will tackle something much easier body image body image I know is going to be a really difficult topic to tackle it's also quite hard to say quickly topic to tackle <laughs> um and it is something that i have discussed on instagram and the question is usually are you worried about darcy and eventually pearl and the um issues around body image in the dance world and the quick answer to this is no i'm not worried but yes i am aware of the of the i don't know what the word is like the vibe around it like the situation the the problems that there are around it i don't know i don't know what the correct wording is so forgive me if i get this a little bit wrong um so i wrote in my notes what have we typically seen when we think of professional ballerinas if we think of that at all um and we think of very i'm going to be very careful with my words here because i don't want to be offensive and i want to use sensitive language um and I would also remind you to try and use sensitive language in the comments as well. So we have seen very, very lean um, adult ballet dancers. We have heard about disordered eating, eating disorders, starving yourself, um, being made to feel terrible for the way your body looks, um, delayed puberty and constantly reaching for the perfect aesthetic. These are all things that I have read people mention in uh, dms to me um and so i started googling this a bit because i also have heard those things too um and so i read a new york times article i will link it below and it's called what is the ballet body and it talks about professional dancing with famous adult ballet uh, and it talks about professional dancers with famous ballet companies adults i mean um and the way they're expected to be extremely low weights to stay tiny um, but how there are people looking to change this and how the industry is changing albeit slowly um, from the top up so not just ballet dancers saying no I'm just not going to do it I'm going to be the way I want to be but choreographers deliberately um, making I don't want to I'm going to healthier choices and picking a variety of body types now when I say variety we have to bear in mind that it's been one body type for so long so it's going to take a while for that to change and for us to see what i would consider real variety but slowly slowly apparently according to what i've read it is changing up there i should note before i go on to the next bit of like information i have we are not at this point this is not a world that we and by we i mean me and my girls are living in um, but i'll talk about the world we're living in in a second um I googled what is the ideal weight for a ballerina um, and this is according to worldwideballet.net and it says uh, the weight which I'll tell you in a second and tell me what you think of it it says and I quote this look is said to have the ability to create perfect balletic lines and expressive and expressive movements on stage the average height of an American ballerina is about five foot two to five foot eight inches. In correspondence to height, weight would ideally range from 85 to 130 pounds. And this is from 2015. So this is dated and change has been made since then. So let's just give that a pinch of salt. I then thought, well, what is the healthy weight for females? Um, as you can see, I am overweight, so I can't 
like base it on like my own weight so i googled healthy weight for a five foot seven female because i'm five foot seven and that is 121 to 158 pounds so a little bit of that does fit in the 85 to 130 pounds so you could say okay if you are on the slimmer uh lower weight end of the scale of what is healthy for five foot seven no problem uh, and then the healthy weight for a five foot two female <laughs> for an email in my notes um is 104 to 135 pounds so five foot two is the lowest height that it says here about the uh, average American height of a American the average height of an American ballerina is five foot two and I have googled the healthy weight for a five foot two and it's 104 to 135 but the here when it says the ideal weight range would be 85 to 130 so those maths don't quite maths do they that doesn't quite work um again these are averages and there'll be some people that are healthy but are smaller and are healthy but bigger. These are just numbers from Google. Um, but that very basic top line research would suggest that they are asking ballet dancers to be too light. So that's some heavy maths and thoughts there and that's not a world I would ever want to be in or want my girls to be in. Something we do is we keep conversations really open about body image, not just for ballet, but like just in general. Like my kids have grown up with a plus size mum. So body image and body confidence and body neutrality is something that they're quite familiar with. Um, the experience that they have had has been not at all that experience of like the higher echelons of um, professional dancing and I don't know if it is still like that maybe I'm seeking out that information because I'm deliberately searching for a certain angle on it I don't know if you're a professional ballet dancer please do chime in um I, I was pleased to hear that the industry is changing and they are looking for more variety and you know with an emphasis on body positivity and healthy bodies so that was good uh, but obviously I do know the stigma around it. So, um, there are a variety of body shapes at, where can I put this? Where can, I'll just keep it on my lap. So there are a variety of body shapes at Darcy and Pearl's dance school. And interestingly, some of the best senior dancers they have there are not the traditional ballerina shape. And they are incredible dancers, like beautiful to watch, so skilled, have so much strength, um, have so much ability um and that is so lovely for the girls to be able to see that not just know like doesn't matter what shape you are you can be a great dancer like to see that is wonderful for them in terms of the body chat that darcy has had herself um she has had some lovely praise for her feet she does lovely little points and turnouts and she's had help with her posture um and i have never heard a comment to her or she has never um, come and told me about comment and I've never had a comment to me about her weight like weight or, or pearl weight is just a non-issue it's just not something I hear talked about and I was expecting it because I have heard all the stigma stigma is the right word I have heard all of that so I was like ready with my armor on ready to like fight that fight and I just haven't had to I haven't heard about it I haven't heard the other mums ever talking about it um I've socialised with some of the teachers outside of dance and it's not been talked about. Um, it's just, I can't tell you enough that it's just not on the radar, which is wonderful. So, just because it's wonderful at the moment, I still have practical things that I do just to be aware, because like I said, I went in with this like, ready to like, go at this problem that I haven't faced yet. Um, and practical things I do, first of all, just the obvious, I would just never ever say to my girls or anyone, you need to lose weight to be a better dancer. I just wouldn't. Um, I will call a spade a spade. Um, dancing is really tiring and it is like a sport. Like you, the, the more physically fit you are, the easier it's gonna be for you. And what I mean by that is like, Darcy can do a dance amazingly and if I try to do that dance and I am plus size I would find that harder I wouldn't have the stamina I'd be puffed out I think I would find it hard to do some of the moves 
Um, that's not to say that a plus size person can't do ballet or can't enjoy it, um, but I'm just saying it is good for my girls to be physically fit. Just going off away from ballet for a second, whilst I will always be a champion for plus size people feeling great in their bodies and knowing their worth and their value and considering themselves beautiful, I am also aware of the health implications around being plus size and that's a very general sweeping statement because obviously everyone's an individual um but uh, if i could choose i would want my children to be healthy weights and have healthy bodies and have healthy lives that's not to say that i'd ever be like you need to lose weight you need to look a certain way this is better this is more beautiful blah, blah blah but you know just be sensible about thinking about that like i know I know what's what in terms of like weight and health is what I'm trying to say, not very well. Um, we don't equate food chat to dance chat. Um, we don't really have a lot of food chat. I'm, I'm not that person like that's a bad food, you can't have that. Um, but we especially wouldn't say like, oh no, you can't have um, some pizza because you've got a dance competition in three days. That's just not even, still wouldn't even come into the equation. Um, I don't allow them to have private lessons without me in the room. If it's a tutor, I don't know. Um, the tutors that they have private lessons with at the moment, I know really well. We've been at the school for years um, and I feel really comfortable and confident with them being alone with them. Um, but if I didn't know somebody, if it was like going to London, and it was a private lesson with no other adults or children there, I would request to be present at that, just to sit quietly and just make sure everything's okay. Um, also, I don't weigh the girls in relation to dance or ballet, I would never, you know, you've talked too long when the camera cuts you off, um, yeah, I would never be like, oh, we've got to audition for this or a show, so let's get weighed, like, it just wouldn't happen. So, to wrap it up, because I've been chatting on too long, the positives are, I love that dance is a really joyful form of exercise for the girls. I love that Darcy is learning to appreciate her body. Um, she feels mentally well and calm. Um, something that she said to me so many times is that when she's dancing, her mind feels really relaxed. And I think what she's trying to say in like kid language is like, it's lovely for her mental health to have that like expressive and creative release and just to enjoy something. Um, she feels powerful. She has lovely posture um, and she knows her body and she knows its strengths. So, in conclusion, I think that the industry is changing slowly. I'm aware of the issues around body image and I'm constantly seeking to protect and empower my girls um, and allowing dance just to be a fun and joyful thing. Then when the pandemic hit, they stopped doing ballet at school because it was an external teacher coming in and obviously, you know, we all remember bubbles and social distancing, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then when it calmed down a little bit, we started her at a dance school and that is when I met Dance Mums. And I had, it was a friend, it was a school mum whose daughter went there, Natasha, hello if you're watching, and she was so lovely. And I think I was expecting it to be like Dance Mums, the show on TLC, I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's where Jojo Siwa came from and Maddie Ziegler, Ziegler, Dalgler. Um, you might have seen it. And those mums, I'm sure it's for the cameras, and I'm sure they are lovely people. Uh, scare me. <laughs> like, I just would not cope well in that environment. Darcy would hate it. Uh, she hates confrontation. I can't cope with confrontation. I just wouldn't be able to. Like, if a mum was mean to me, I'd be like, okay, sorry, <laughs> bye. <laughs> oh, I've got myself all, my mind all gone messy. I should have written notes. So, we started at this dance school. I knew Natasha and she was really nice. And I was like, well, obviously I've got really lucky because she's like the one nice one that I've met and all the others are gonna be like dance moms. And then we went and I met a lady called Nicola who actually is also on YouTube. I'll link her channel for you, lovely lady. Um, and I thought, oh no, she's gonna be like, and she was really nice. And I was like, okay, well, I've just got really lucky because Natasha and Nicola are both really nice, but everybody else is gonna, long story short, nobody has been like scary dance mom vibe i'm gonna stop saying it like that now uh but nobody has been like that everybody has been really nice um in terms of competitiveness um i haven't really felt that like vicious competitive vibe there is a competitive nature to festivals because there are children dancing and they are being given 
medals if they do the best. Um, but number one, I think it helps that we're in a team. So Darcy is in team top hat and win or lose, you're in the team and you celebrate your team and it's all about having fun and doing your best. Like, did you do your best? Yes. Then that's it. That's all anybody can ever ask of you. Did you enjoy it? Yes. Brilliant. Then that's a win, isn't it? Because you've enjoyed something and you've done your best. And if you didn't do your best, don't worry about it. Try again next time. That's kind of the vibe of it. Of course, if you went higher, it might be different. I haven't done those higher competitions, so I couldn't speak on them, but I can speak on my own character and I know that I don't think I'm the kind of person that would turn into like the scary competitive mom vibe. Um, yeah, we've had really positive experiences. I also thought maybe it'd be a bit gatekeepy. I thought people might be a bit like, well, I'm not going to tell you that such and such an, in, uh, you know, the winter intensive day is open for booking. I'm not going to tell you about these things, but I haven't found that. I found that everybody's quite collaborative. Everyone is excited about it and loves it. So you want to share that with your other people that love it and excited about it as well, because it's a community. It's actually really nice. Um, so yeah, I don't be scared if you're thinking about getting into this like dance world and it is a whole world because I thought it was just like a lesson here a ballet shoe there, no, no, it's, there's so much to it, I still feel like a total newbie, and there's so far you can go with it, like, remember that, um, rabbit hole that you can fall down, like, you can go and go and go, um, but so far, our experiences have been really positive, anyway, uh, that was the easiest topic to tackle, because I don't feel like there's been competitive dance mom vibes, I say dance mums all the time, I say dance mum life, dance mum vibes, I just mean what I mean, like my own experience of it has been very pleasant. Um, in terms of the competitive nature for children, I'm aware that we've been talking a really long time, so I could perhaps address that in another video, because I think that's a topic in itself. Is that good for children? Is it bad for children? Um, what can you do to make it a really good experience for children, etc. Are there any other big topics? Because I feel like those were the biggest ones that have been asked about on Instagram. But if you, one, if you've listened all the way to the end of this, well done, because this will be a lengthy video. Um, but if you've got any other topics, let me know, because I will give them my best shot at answering. Um, if you have differing opinions to me, that's absolutely okay. I'm interested to hear them. Um, but again, I've said it so many times, but let's just keep the comments really positive and friendly. Um, and yeah, I will leave it there. I'll link our last video if you want to go and watch that. We had a lovely day at the Royal Ballet School. Yeah, thanks for watching. I am going to go and have a lay down. See you soon. Bye.